Hello and welcome to this video on layout containers in under 10 minutes. I recorded the last video on this topic in August of 2014 and almost 60,000 views later, I think it's long overdue an update. Now to inform the update, what I've done is I've looked at the last videos I recorded on this topic and it's really, really clear that no one wants to spend more than five to six minutes on layout containers. So to help you along with that, what I've done is in the description of this video, I've contained chapter markers and in these chapter markers, you can skip to the relevant section that you want to cover. The other thing is I'm not going to be able to cover every topic in detail. So you'll occasionally see these information cards and you can click on those and head to a more detailed video on that topic. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some notes in the description and these notes simply cover all the big features that have been deployed to the dashboarding capability in desktop. You can have a scroll and essentially anything highlighted in yellow is a major workflow change to how dashboarding works. So you should take a look at that feature and really understand the value that it can bring. I'll be releasing videos on all of these highlighted features um, uh, in the near future. For everything since 2019, the videos already exist, so hop into those tutorials now and take advantage of those. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so I'm inside a very simple workbook here. I've connected to Sample Superstore Sales and I've built a basic bar chart. We're gonna use this to talk about layout containers. I'm gonna create a brand new dashboard and I'm just going to rename this very quickly. Okay, so now we're here. The first thing to do is to introduce you to the different layout container types. There's actually three. There's the horizontal container type, the vertical container type, and the tiled container type. Those live here in the objects pane on the bottom left. So you see the horizontal container here. And this allows you to stack content side by side. The vertical container allows you to stack content vertically above each other. And the tiled layout container doesn't actually have uh, an, an object apart from the fact that you can see here that in gray, I've got this option here selected as tiled. I can toggle floating, but I'm gonna keep this tiled. What I want to do is highlight the different behaviors between tiled and floating. So if I switch over to floating and I drag this bar chart, you'll see that I get a square and this actually allows me to drop the content anywhere on the dashboard. And along with it, I'll get the legend sort of attached to that item. Now, if I go back one step and I switch to tiled, and I do the same thing, when I drop the bar chart onto the dashboard, you'll actually see the whole page goes gray. When I let go, it actually creates this design. And you can see here that if I select the bar chart, this is in gray. If I select this side, it's in blue. And there's actually a reason behind that coloring. This is because Tableau has actually tiled the layout for me. And the only way to know about how it's done that is to go to the item hierarchy. This can be found in the layout pane here in the top. And going down here to the bottom, I'll just zoom in here. You can see this is the item hierarchy. And if I expand this out a little bit more, you can actually see that in that one drag and drop, Tableau was quite busy. It contained a whole range of layout items. And now you can see the full range of layout containers, a tiled container, in blue highlighted here across the entire page, another horizontal container, which is inside of that tiled container, and in it contains two containers, tiled and vertical. And then you'll see that content here is actually marked in a different color. Content is always highlighted in gray and containers are always highlighted in blue. And that's the best way of distinguishing what's what on a tiled dashboard. The last thing to highlight is that if I click in this vertical container, you'll see that it has this sort of hashed design here. Don't be worried about this. This is just a signal to let you know that there's some white space that's not being used. And that's because inside of this vertical container, the legend is only taking up the top section. To use up that white space, just to get rid of that, if that really annoys you, you can actually go to the dashboard, bring in the blank option here. And when I place that in there, that disappears. And then if I go back to my layout tab and I go to the item hierarchy and click on vertical, you'll see that I have two items, the category and legend up at the top, and then the blank, which takes up the rest of the space. So the blank container is incredibly useful here because it can help fill up white space. Okay, we've covered the tiled container, but what about floating containers? Well, if I head over to the top section here and I select the tiled container at the top and I right click on that container and remove the container, 
this dashboard actually becomes a floated dashboard because if I select the horizontal container and I simply move it around, you see that everything inside of it moves around. So in one file sweep, I've actually changed the system of this dashboard from a tiled dashboard to a floating dashboard. Now, depending on the version that you're using in Tableau, you just wanna check the behavior of floated dashboard because they don't always preserve their position. I'm using the latest version of Tableau. So actually, as I change the size of this dashboard, it keeps the relative position and the relative location the same. However, in other versions of Tableau, you might not get that behavior. So just be sure to double check that behavior before you publish that dashboard. It can cause things to shift a few pixels here and there. Now that we've covered tiled and floating layout containers, it's time to look at the behaviors. I'm gonna create a new dashboard here and I'm just gonna rename that to layout containers too. The first thing I'm gonna do is drag a horizontal container out and I'm gonna make sure that it's floating as you can see here and drag that out to fill the entire width of the page. I'm also gonna drag a vertical one here in the middle and I'm gonna drag that out to fill the vertical height in the page. Now, one of the things I haven't covered yet is that in the layout tab, you've got all these formatting options for layout containers. You see, I have the vertical layout container selected here and I actually get the X and Y coordinates. You can adjust that here and move the object in the dashboard. You can also change the size and the width, the border of the layout containers, and also things like the background color. I find this particular step extremely useful, helping label your layout containers and helping you know which layout container is doing what. The other option you get is for outer padding. Now outer padding adds a little bit of white space on the outside of the border, whereas inner padding actually adds that space on the inside of the border. You can't see anything happening here because there's nothing inside of the layout container. So a little later on, you'll see that as I add items, that space is being observed. If I go over to the horizontal layout container, I'll just quickly set the background color to orange and I'll give it a slightly thicker border so it's clearer to see what's going on. Okay, so what I've done is I've created three new sheets, sales, profit, and profit ratio, all as simple text items. And if we go back to my layout containers tab, I just wanna add these individually to these layout containers. So I'll head over to the dashboard view and I'll just start by dragging sales onto the canvas. Now notice when I drag it over the layout container, it gives me the same highlighting as if it was a tiled option. That's because all layout containers with contents in them behave in a tiled manner. So if I drop that in there, you'll see that the sheet takes up the height of the sheet as it was designed. And I have a little bit of space here at the bottom, but as I add the next one, I get a few visual cues. I get this one on the left, this one on the top, and this one on the right. Now this is absolutely fundamental. If you want this to remain a horizontal layout container, you need to drag this item on either side of the existing object. So it has to go here on the right hand side or on the left. If I do that for profit and then I come in here and I drag another one for profit ratio, you'll see I no longer get the option to drag it above and below. That's because this layout container can now no longer be a vertical layout container. So you must be wondering, well, why would a horizontal layout become a vertical container? Well, let's go back a few steps. Let's pretend we've only got this one item here. If I then drag profit below, I get the option to add it below. But at this point, when I drop the sheet into the layout container, it now becomes a vertical layout container. Let me just show you that. This is the vertical container. Go back one step, it was a horizontal container. Go forward one step, it's a vertical container. So you must understand that when you drop items into a layout container, it really does matter where you put them because it can change the behavior of how the layout behavior behaves. Okay, we just got a few things to finish off now. We just need to kind of space these items out so they take up the whole entire horizontal layout container. You can select those items and then double click the tab to select the horizontal layout container on top. Double clicking an object selects its parent container. If I go to the container, and then I select distribute contents evenly, Tableau spaces the contents out evenly. It doesn't take up all the space just yet because each of these sheets need to be set to hit the entire view. So let me do that for the remaining two. And now you can see this is now performing the way I'd like it to. Now the last thing I'd like to do is to put this vertical container inside of my horizontal container. It's quite common that you might actually put containers inside of containers to create a certain desired effect. 
To do that, you just need to grab your vertical container here or whichever container you're using. And when you hold shift, it becomes something that you can drop into a tiled layout container. If I let go, I get that floating item back. If I hold shift, I now have the ability to place it. So what I wanna do is place that here between profit and sales. And when I do that, because I've set the container to distribute contents evenly, there's now four items so that each get a quarter of the space available. I can now select the horizontal layout container by double clicking that vertical container and then moving that around. It's a bit of a mind maze. Don't forget, if you're getting lost, you're not sure what's going on, you can always go to layout and then go to item hierarchy to see what's going on. And you can select the items there as well. It's often sometimes an easier place to do that. Now, what I'd like to do is drag a few items into this vertical container. If you recall, it was set to have a certain padding on the outside and the inside. So if I drag a blank item into this uh, layout container and I keep dragging more, I have to drag them below, remember, because this is a vertical layout container. I can't put it on the side. Um, you'll see that these blank options now preserve this white space here in between the border and the actual object itself. So that white space that I created prior is now kicking in. If you want to change that, you can of course go to layout and just keep increasing that white space. And you can see that the blank containers now have a lot bigger gap on the outside. And so using these techniques, if you combine all of these techniques and a bit of design, a little bit of minimalist design, you can start to come up with some really, really nice layouts. But hopefully I've taught you some of the fundamentals of layout containers. And if you found this video useful, hit subscribe. Otherwise, drop a like, drop a comment, let me know what you'd like to see.